Well, hey, YouTube, welcome back, my friends, once again to Jack's Tech Hut. Hey, guys, today we're going to be talking, obviously, the thumbnail and the title always gives it away, but we're going to be talking about the new Zorin OS, the new version 17. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Zorin itself, uh, give you a little bit about the background. We're going to talk here about uh, how it runs today, and I want to show you some stuff. I just loaded this up uh, this morning, and I thought I was pretty interested in it, so I wanted to give you a little bit of review. So let's go ahead and get started. So I am running this on Oracle's VirtualBox. And I just wanted to show you the settings before we start the operating system. So the settings are shown here. We gave it 8 gigabytes of RAM. Okay, so we have 8 total gigabytes of RAM. I even bumped the video memory up to 24 uh, megabyte of, of video memory. And I gave it, um, I believe, a total of... Uh, we're trying to see here the settings. Uh, let's go into settings here. We'll take a look. And the storage, I gave it 30 gigabytes of, of uh, internal storage for its hard drive. So again, we're going to go ahead and fire this up. I just wanted to show you this really quickly and show you that I did boost uh, the RAM up. I started originally with 2 gigs of RAM and I would not recommend that at all. All right, let's go ahead and get started with uh, Zorn OS here and have a look around and uh, tell you a little bit about Zorn. Make it full screen here for you. All right, so you can see the new logo screen here booting up. The new Zorn OS logo screen is uh, coming up here online. And uh, it looks like it's loading. You get the nice little keywords. This says Zorin, Z-O-R-I-N. And uh, this is the, again, version 17. So we're going to fire it up here. I did notice, as you're seeing right now, live... Um, it, it does lag on the install, you know, I mean, not on the install, on the, on the boot up process. All right, then you're presented with the normal, uh, like a log on screen here. So we're going to put our super secret password in and uh, bring up Zorin OS. I am actually running this on a uh, AMD processor is what Zorin is running on today. And let's see here. All right, so there's Zorn booted up. So let's talk up first a little bit about the Zorin OS. So Zorin OS is based on Ubuntu Linux. Uh, Zorin OS began its life in 2009 with version 1. Okay, so quite a few years ago, if you're looking over time of software. And uh, looking through it, if you look through Wikipedia, you can see that they pretty much have had a new version every year. So good going to the Zorin OS team. On December 20th, 2023, version 17 was released. That's what we are looking at today. All right. So I want to show you here uh, that... Let's bring up the web browser. So the first thing I noticed about Zorn OS, I'm going to tell you the bad and the good, is even with that much RAM, 8 gigabytes of RAM, this thing is pretty sluggish. <laughs> um, now, it may be a lot better in bare metal, but I'm telling you, for a virtual machine, I've never seen a Linux operating system uh, you know, kind of run this 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 slow speed of doing things here, and I can't speed it up. I've been working on it all day, trying to find a way to speed this thing up and make it better. All right, so here's Zorn OS. You can get it at Zorn, Z-O-R-I-N dot com. Um, I'll put that in the description below. There'll be a link for it down there, so you can go download this yourself. So... What I wanted to talk to you about is there's a few different uh, versions that you can get with this. And if we go to download Zorn, you can see they come up right here on the front page here with the pro version. So the pro version has six premium layouts. Now what they're talking about six premium layouts, you can make Zorn OS either look like Chrome OS, Mac OS, uh, Windows 10, Windows 11, uh, and Ubuntu and standard Zorin OS. So those are your six different premium layouts. All right, uh, professional grade creative suite of apps, you know, that's pushing it. 
they make that sound really, really impressive, like it's really worth, uh, you know, spending the money on it. But basically, it's all free open source apps that you can install anyway. So it's not something that you're really getting anything more for your money than the OS itself. All right. Advanced productivity tools. We're going to look at some of those. Again, those are free open source tools that you can download, install, and place on top of your Zorin OS. Now, I don't get this bundled with alternatives uh, to over $5,000 in professional software. Yeah, yeah, this is not paid uh, software. Again, this is open source software. And yeah, I guess it would relate, you know, to the $5,000 uh, that you're going to be paying anyway to, you know, if you bought proprietary software. I'm, I'm pretty sure of that, that you'd be paying for that anyway, that $5,000 uh, for sure. So let's talk a little bit about um, support. Support's big, and you know, even Ubuntu has a, a professional version, or I think they just call it a paid version, where you're paying for support. And folks, if you're going to use this in your company, I would highly recommend paying the $48 uh, a copy. Maybe you can work up a deal with them if you buy a lot more copies. If you're really, really uh, comfortable with Linux, uh, you know, I've been teaching Linux for quite a few years now. And I'm pretty comfortable with it, uh, getting around, updating it, and doing everything myself. So I probably wouldn't need the support. But if you're somebody new and you're like, hey, we're going to switch our company over to Linux for whatever reason you're going to do that. And you're going to use this stuff, then you're going to uh, want to go ahead and pay for support. Now, let's scroll down a little bit. So as we scroll down, now we can see, oh, wait, Zorin OS 17 Core for basic use. Now, basic use to me can be pretty much anything. If you put it in your company and everybody's basically using it, then that's basic use. I mean, maybe you're outside of their terms of uh, their their agreements, but you download it for free. It's an ISO. That's what I did. And I loaded it as a virtual machine. Now, you can also download Zorn OS 16.3. Um, which is a older version, naturally, of Zorin OS, 16.3. Uh, so it's probably about a version or two ago. But it is for older PCs, and it's a light version. All right, so you do have that option. For you educators out there, there is a school version, and I thought it was kind of cool. Again, it runs on Zorn, Zorn OS 16.3, which, is, again, is fine. It's 17 and 16.3, guys. There's just a little bit, you know, new stuff in there. But if you scroll down here, you can see that it has stuff like educational apps for every class. Again, these are open source free applications you can install yourself. But it is nice that they took the extra trouble to bundle all this stuff together for you to make it really easy. Guys, look, you can teach coding, right? I've used Scratch to teach coding. And, I mean, I do teach um, Python coding. I teach a little bit of C++, and I kind of just graze the surface of Java programming. But we always like to start with Scratch just to give people an idea of uh, relationship programming of how one step can work with another. Okay, So they do have Scratch with that. Uh, your older PCs made new again. Again, we talked about that. Uh, bridge the learning divide. And there's a lot of great learning software in here. And you know, I think it's a really good, uh, really, really good uh, piece of software to download that. Okay, what I wanted to do though is go back here, go back to Zorin OS, and I wanted to see on, because uh, I looked at this earlier. So if I click on download the pro version, it's going to ask me for my email address. I sign up, I pay the $48, and I can download the Zorin OS, uh, the paid version, right? Uh, learn about OS Pro. I, I clicked on this earlier. And it does tell you down through here, here's your different desktops you can get. The Mac OS, the Windows Classic, Windows 11, Ubuntu, uh, Gnome, and Chrome OS. Okay, standard desktop layouts. These are different layouts. And so that's awesome. It's really cool. Is it something you need? Maybe, maybe not. Progressional, professional grade uh, creative suite. There are quite a few different uh, creative tools here. It talks about, um, again, this is you know photoshop compatible so it's probably gimp uh, it's all open source software um, make real progress towards your goals never worry about forgetting anything again with uh, plentiful 
plentif plentify and uh, task managers and so on and so forth. Uh, they make writing and sketching very easy if you have a tablet and you want to use that for writing and sketching. Uh, get your desktop to the big screen so they have some kind of uh, casting software built in. Uh, and this is the, the many other productivity apps you get like Mind Maps, uh, eBook Reader, 3D CAD, uh, Feeder Reader, Password Managers, 2D CAD, Office Suite, Screen Recorders, you get it. So there's a ton of stuff in here that you can get. Uh, if you buy the paid version totally up to you but here's what i would suggest honestly since i started playing with this and uh, download the new version here zorno 17 i thought wow this is it man this is the operating system for me for life uh, well <laughs> download the free version first install it on your computer and play around so i thought the next thing i would do with you here is just walk you through it and show you what do you get with the free version so let's click the start button and we're going to start uh, maybe with accessories uh, so you got clocks, files, text editors, and weather. All right. We go back here. All right. So we do have that stuff. I can't get this out of the way. Okay. We have graphics here. So the next thing we have graphics. We have uh, an image viewer, uh, Libra Draw, okay, uh, photos. So we have a couple different things there. The internet itself, it comes with Firefox web browser, which is really nice. Um, Romania. Romania is nice. We use it a lot. I do teach it in school. And what we use that for is connecting to all of your internal devices. Uh, we use it networking. We use it for connecting to SSH uh, servers, you know, uh, Linux servers. So it's nice to have that. It's nice it's preloaded. All right. Let's look at this office package. We have a calendar. We have contacts. We have evolution for email if you've never used it. It's a, it's a good email client. It works really well. And then you got the Libra Office Suite that comes prepackaged with the free version. All right. Sound and video. We have uh, Barcio. I don't, I've never used it. Cheese. I've never used. Rhythmbox. I have used. Rhythmbox is a um, uh, music editor. You can lay down tracks, do different things with it. Uh, some audio stuff. Sound recorder is made for recording sounds such as podcast and then videos. All right, let's go back. We got some system tools here. Uh, pretty much everything in here is what you want. Uh, there's power statistics, uh, settings, software, software updater, uh, startup applications. You can take a tour anytime you want. You can upgrade your Zorn OS, which is nice to have that feature built in because many times when you work with an operating system, such as a Linux-based operating system, and there's a new one out, you have no way of knowing how to upgrade it. So this is nice. Uh, Windows App Support, uh, Zorn Appearance, Zorn Connect. Okay, so we have all that to go with us. Uh, and then we got our utilities here where we have uh, Archive Manager, which is a zipping tool backups calculator characters uh, disk usage analysis disks a document scanner fonts help logs and uh, password manager passwords and keys system monitor and uh, your terminal okay all right what i want to show you now is i'm going to open this and, and it's going to make a liar out of me but let's launch LibreOffice Writer. Okay, that's what I do a lot of my work in is, is creating documents and creating uh, how-to documents. So let's launch Libra Writer and see how long it takes to launch. All right, let's uh, just fire this up. And we'll see, it kind of goes like, like that, like halfway. Okay, well, uh, and then you wait, and then you're waiting. Oh, there it goes. And then it loads. It just doesn't feel snappy. It just feels like there's something holding it up there. All right. Not really sure what it is. Once you get into the application, it's very responsive. Uh, it's like this is for creating documents. So it's very snappy once you're in it. It works great. It doesn't have any problem. But give yourself a little time when these applications are loading. Uh, save changes. Don't save. Let's go with Firefox now. Let's fire Firefox up here. And, uh, okay, Firefox didn't load too poorly. Uh, we're not going to give it a, a test drive. So Firefox did not load too poorly there. All right, let's go into, let's say, if we wanted to open Terminal, 
So it kind of opens like, um, it reminds me of Fedora Lynx. I guess this is the uh, GNOME uh, experience or the GNOME experience, right? So a uh, terminal. Here's the terminal experience right here. And let's see if it comes with uh, HTOP, which I would imagine. HTOP was not found. Uh, probably top is found. Uh, top is just used so you can look at your processes on a on a Mac. I mean, on a Mac, on a, a Linux computer. We can get out of this one. Let's see if we have a. I tried H top. <coughs> um, B top maybe. Let's see if B top comes with it. B top does not come with it. But what's nice about all this um, software, if it's around, if it's featured around Ubuntu, and you're used to using uh, Ubuntu type of distributions. My go-to uh, right now is Linux Mint. I have it on every Linux computer that I run. I run Linux Mint. I'm just used to it. It works very well for my applications and for what I want to do. So so let's go ahead and say we wanted to uh, do a sudo apt install btop. Let's see if we can do this. Uh, it looks like it does like it. All right, so now if we run btop, you can see how much of a nicer uh, display this has to look at your processes running. Okay, that's what that's what this is for. But it gives you more than that because it's also giving you total memory usage. What you're seeing right now, we're only using 1.18 gigabytes. And now, folks, that's pretty much for the desktop. I don't have anything running. Okay, the desktop is running. All right, tells us how much free memory we have going on there. Uh, total is 7.4. Free is 4.77 gigabytes, which is kind of odd because there's like nothing running. So I don't understand what's going on. But if we look over here at the task manager, we can see what's going on and what's running in the background. So there's obviously stuff that's running here that's eating up memory. If I go to the top here, we can actually uh, look at the memory usage. Um, let's see here. Uh, if I hit letter E, uh, mem B, you can see there, uh, looking now through the memory, there's 57 megabytes being used here for something called uh, package kit D. So I don't know if you can kill that or what would happen if we kill it. But if you highlight it, you can just simply click on the or hit the letter key on the keyboard and you can kill that. All right, so. Again, I don't know what it is, so I'm not really going to mess with that too much. All right. All right. Let's see if we can't get back out of there. We're going to exit the terminal and get rid of that. I also did install one of my favorite. Uh, I'm just throwing this in there for you. This is not really part of Zorn OS, but one of my favorites uh, is Terminator to use as a terminal. Okay. I did find this is really neat. Though. If you go down, you right click on the, on the uh, start button. Okay. And go to Zorn Appearance. Right in here is where you change the appearance. Now, this is where they get you. This is where you got to pay for it. You see here where, where it's got the nice layouts? Upgrade to Zorn OS Pro. Okay, that's about the only thing I found to hold back or hold up there that you can't do with it. Because none of these really feel like. If you go here, that doesn't really feel like it. All you have is the uh, smaller start button here on the bottom. And go back here to bring it back go back here I guess it does kind of have it so it's, it's there so I don't know exactly what where they're coming from or what they're doing there with the different OS's but this will give you a different uh, start menu over here yeah how about that okay so again I like the regular start menu you do have different themes uh, you can do different themes with it effects I thought this was neat kind of a weird thing but click on jelly effect watch the window you see how it's making a jelly motion see that so yeah i mean it's nice but to me animations tend to take up more memory so it, you know use it at your, at your will if you want something like that uh, you can change the sidebars the super keys the desktop we can do all kind of stuff here put the home uh, on top of your desktop the trash can if you want that i normally do have that on so i'll just turn that on and the reason i keep that on is so i can empty it okay real quick we're going to the file manager Okay. File manager is nice. I don't know how much creativity we can get with this thing to uh, spruce it up or make it look different or nice. I'm, I'm not really sure. 
haven't really done a whole lot with it. Let's go to properties here. Nothing really in there. Um, so, yeah, I don't know much you can do with it, but it, it is functional. Uh, if you go to folders, you can go to new folder. Um, uh, we'll do something like work documents. Work documents. Okay, and then we have our work document. Um, I don't know if you can create a new document. Yeah, we can create a new writer document here. So that's nice. You can get right into your uh, file manager, open up writer, and start uh, immediately doing a... Oh, well, no, maybe not. Maybe I spoke too soon. Because what it did, it made it, but it didn't open it. So you'd have to double-click it, open it up, and there you go. So uh, there's a new writer document right there, so we can start writing with... Okay, we can right-click on it. Again, we can delete it. Uh, move it to trash. All right. Uh, the trash can I just noticed uh, it got a little little bigger okay like it's being stuffed so we're gonna empty trash uh, empty trash itself so is the new Zorn OS 17 uh, worth it uh, you know the free version is download the free version I want you to try it out see what you think about it you know and uh, see you know play around set up VirtualBox I believe I did a video already on this channel of how to set up VirtualBox how to set up a new virtual machine um, you know, with the link below, I think what I'll also put in there because I'm, I'm adding a lot of these how-to documents to my GitHub. And I have a GitHub uh, repository with just simple how-to PDF documents so you can download those and use those uh, to, uh, for anything you wish. And, and I hope that you do use those. So, all right. So that is everything with uh, Zorn OS that I can think of. Uh, last thing here, maybe, you know, display or change background. So there probably are some different backgrounds here, as as there is. And there's some really nice backgrounds in here. Uh, let's see here. So you can uh, change it to something different, you know. So anyway, you can even add your own pictures, like I would figure you would be able to. Okay. Uh, online accounts, you can add all your, you know, your Google Drives, your uh, Dropbox accounts. Um, I use pCloud. pCloud will work on this just fine. Um, OneDrive, you know, should work on here. OneDrive is a little weird. with Linux doesn't really love it. So, all right. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you try out Zorn OS, uh, the new version 17. And I hope that you uh, enjoyed the video. I hope you get something out of it. But uh, leave in the comments below what you think. You know, load it up and let me know if you thought it was a little bit sluggish. Uh, maybe it's just something to the start. Maybe, you know, once I use it for a while, it'll be fine. But we'll see. But like I said, I am kind of a Linux Mint guy. So, you know, there is that. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, until next time. Uh, oh, well, first of all, before that, hey, if you're not subscribed to this channel, why not, man? Click that subscribe button. I'd love to have you here. Also, give it a big old thumbs up. I would appreciate that. It helps in the rankings. And until next time, as Steve Jobs always said, stay curious. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.